welcome back to Pathfinder Kingmaker. We have someone waiting for us in the throne room, so let's head there and then we need to go to that bald hilltop immediately. Castle Aldori. I beg pardon for the intrusion, Your Grace, but I'm afraid I have bad news. Magic beasts are attacking people across the country. No one know where they come from, but if the situation develops, continues to develop as it has, it may pose a serious problem. It already has. Fortunately, there is good news as well. The Embeth travelers have offered their help to fight the monsters. I expect this would be a good opportunity to invite some guests from neighboring countries to join the hunt. Would you mind that? Who are these Embeth travelers and what would they ask for their help? Embeth Forest is south of your domain. It is a dangerous place swarming with wicked fae and other magical creatures. Embeth travelers are renowned for their mastery of eliminating such threats, and they don't ask for much. Compensation for traveling expenses and the right to keep any trophies they hunt down. This seems a fair price to me. And whom will we invite for the hunt? We need to establish connections with our closest neighbors, Pitax and Mivon. I'll invite someone from Ke King Erovetis inner circle, as well as some Aldori sword lords from Mivon. So, sure, good idea. Invite the guests. I'll give the necessary orders immediately. And hunting lodge has been revealed. And Bokken, good day. I came to tell you that I'm doing fine in my little shop. Our folk love their ruler, and if their beloved baron buys old Bokken's potions, he's certainly a worthy alchemist. Here's the gift for you on this occasion. Potion of Barkskin. Hunting together with foreign guests not only helped solve the problem of rapidly multiplying magical animals, it also improved our relationships with our neighbors. But little did we know that this innocent fun would be the start of a real catastrophe. Sounds promising. I guess that means we are in... Act 3, then. I wish it would show us. Anyways, uh, let's go into the uh, bedroom. Since we don't need to travel alone, there is no reason not to uh, grab the uh, supplies. And we need to hurry. Uh, leave. We will bring Harim, Amiri, Lindsay, Ekon, and Jubilost. And then we have to go there. And yes, we definitely want to enter that location. Um. Okay. <gasps> Maybe we should buff up. Summon a, an air elemental. Our time has come. My skills are getting rusty. Be on guard. Anything is possible. Should swap these around. You can summon a fire elemental. Well, stand with me. Oh. 
That is a big thing. That went well. Um, masterwork dagger, amulet of natural armor plus two. Without a doubt. And we have something going on here. Invitation for them from the for the Baron. We have done that. And the barony managed to persevere and enjoys peace once again. Plus one community, plus four military, and plus one economy. I think we can declare the Camelands also. Uh, but I think that uh, locks us for 14 days. Yeah, because we need to be there. Um... North Null Marshes. We should probably build a settlement there. But it would seem that we have to be in the um, throne room to do that. Um, we probably should do those things though. I would pause the recording, but it doesn't really help to do that because, as you know, petitioners come along and all sorts of things happen. Let's build a settlement near the river. So the Thorn River or the Skunk River. I think we'll build it here. And this one shall be Port Martin Martin. Yes. Built. Can we zoom in? Enter. The first thing, of course, that we need to build is a bulletin board. We have 376 build points. For the time being, we'll leave it at that. I don't think we can build more here yet. Well, this, this must be a town first. Okay, so then we have leveling up that, and we also have claiming Camelons. Let's do that. Your barony has expanded, it now includes the Camelons. We can also build a settlement there. Um, I think we'll build it there. And we will name this settlement N. Fort Groundbreak. There we go. We'll jump in here as well and build a bulletin board. Like so. 
Better visit the throne room. Tristian and Lindsay. Tristian's face glows with happiness. We made it. The second cursed attack was repelled, and the grateful citizens of the barony have a special reward for you. 6,500 gold coins. Tristian looks at you thoughtfully and sighs. Unfortunately, I must bring you bad news again. The bald hilltop lays silent for the moment, but another attack is certain to come soon. Lindsay, I don't have anything useful to add. The locals are either oblivious to the curse's origins, or they're too scared to talk. I'd be better off reading ancient books on curses. Do we still know nothing about this curse? Well, nothing that can help us contain it. Once every few months it drives nearby animals, monsters and other beasts insane, sending them into a bloodthirsty rampage. I don't know what action we can take on this. The only way I can help is by roughly predicting when the next attack will begin. Forgive me, Caledon. Don't be so hard on yourself, Tristian. Even knowing when to get ready is an important thing to know. I don't know how we'd handle these attacks if they happened without warning. Neutral good. Lindsay is right. You're too hard on yourself, Tristian. Tristian lowers his head. Thank you. Your support means much to me. Looks like we don't have a choice then. We will wait and prepare for the next attack. Tristian just nods, looking down gloomily. And then... We... Blah blah... We should rank up the military as well. Which will probably give us more people in the throne room since that's a new month. Military reached rank 3. Amiri seems to be on edge. Thus, we have to go kill the um, thing. Oh. That was a problem we didn't get. Minus one military, minus two stability. Minus one economy. Uh, opportunity that we failed. Training. We can strengthen Cassiel's skills as a general. And we have monsters. Monster invasion can only be. Oh, oh dear. Monster sightings, we'll send Rogongar on that. Christian is not on it. Okay, start the event then. The epidemic continues. More and more people die, more and more monsters roam your lands. Some of your subjects have already fled in search of safer havens. Your barony's very existence is in danger. We do have good news too. I managed to gather some information that I hope will help you eliminate the threat before it is too late. Shortly after the epidemic started, goblins began appearing everywhere. The locals report that these goblins have been celebrating and shouting something about the Day of Glory for Lamashtu, when all humans would be eaten by monsters and only goblins would remain. Sounds disturbing, does it not? Maybe that prophecy was more accurate than... Lamashtu, what do we know about her? She's called the Mother of Monsters. Her symbol is the three-eyed jackal head. She's an ancient and extremely evil goddess who spreads nightmares, insanity, and, perhaps most of interest to us, monsters. Her worshippers are mostly of the more monstrous races like goblins, lamayas, and gnolls. That said, there's no short supply of secret followers and cults among more civilized peoples too, including the people of the River Kingdoms. So, we need to find a goblin leader and press them for information. Any idea where to begin the search? I'm sorry, no. Panic spread everywhere. My agents had to run for their lives after villagers mistook them for spies and well poisoners. They were almost lynched on the spot. All we know for sure is that there is a large goblin village somewhere within the barony. You'll have to look at it yourself, I'm afraid. Thank you for the information. I hope it helps, helps you to save the lives of your people. 
Jod's eyes are bloodshot and his posture is slack. The wrinkles on his face have deepened and his sparse hair has gone grey. It's a disaster, Your Grace. We have an epidemic developing in the country. The afflicted first gets a fever, then a bloody cough, then several hours later... The cleric shakes his head and grimaces. And that's just half the trouble. Afterward, the bodies of the afflicted become like some kind of cocoon and monsters hatch out of them. People keep dying and we haven't the slightest clue what's causing it or how to deal with it. Tristian and I established a field hospital in the building of the former prison. Don't look at me like that, there were no better places to choose from. Frankly, we were lucky to find this one. To cut a long story short, we have a female patient who has volunteered for vivisection. It means cutting into her living body to look for the source of this disease. Jod frowns. After the surgery, Rast will forgive us, we'll be lucky if we can close her up and let her go alive and well. However, we don't want to do it without your presence, Your Grace, so please try to find some time to attend. There's one more thing. Jod hands you a battered letter. Keston, that dunce, sent a message. He rambles from place to place. These letters are all we ever receive. Well, just read it. I guess it's urgent. Your Grace, please forgive me my sudden disappearance. I deemed myself of more use among your subjects than at court. The people are afraid, Your Grace. They believe that they've been forgotten, that their ruler couldn't care less about the simple folk, even as they perish each and every day. For this reason, those who can bear arms are starting to take matters into their own hands. A wild mob is a force to be reckoned with, and you already have enough to worry about. Fortunately, I was able to convince these people that I'm on their side, and in the end I've decided to lead this militia myself in order to be the first one to know whenever the people learn something new and to protect them from making rash decisions. I've led troops before, and your subjects view me as one of their own, so they trust me and are willing to follow me. It was with a heavy heart that I left your castle, but my hope was that once among the common people I would be able to track down the source of the disease that struck the barony. I was recently informed that one of the squads scouring the outlying regions of Camelands had encountered a mysterious shrine. Our spies report that at the beginning of each week, cultists gather there to worship the dark goddess Lamashtu, the pa pa patroness of all manner of hideous creatures. I know little of the gods and their affairs, but the appearance of the mother of beasts and her followers in a land teeming with monsters can hardly be a coincidence. As soon as I've finished writing this letter, I shall lead a squad of my best men there and await your arrival. I ask for your help, Your Grace, for I shall need it to strangle this filth in its cradle. Who knows? Perhaps we'll capture one of the cultists alive and find out if they and their goddess are behind the misfortunes of your barony. Your loyal servant, Keston Garess. Um, follow Jod. I see. Let's go. This is our hospital. Jod shows you around the bleak, comfortless building with its barred cells. The prison is certainly not the best location, nor the healthiest, but it's better than nothing. Also, it might be cruel to say this, but considering the nature of the malady, it would be safer for everyone if the patients were kept behind the bars until they are healed. Tristian, I hope the city will get a proper clinic in time. Um, who's our patient? Her name is Madla Stasek, a peasant woman from a nearby village. We hadn't seen any prior cases of the disease there. I pray for that brave woman. She's the first one to mount the courage necessary to volunteer for the surgery. We cannot let her down. Where will the surgery take place? Well, that room was previously a torture chamber. There was already a suitable table. Neutral good? Good. I have no need for a torture chamber anyway. I thought as much. Give me a few moments to look around. If you must, but please don't take too long. This sounds ominous. I will guide us. Um, let's begin. 
Jod deep breathes in deeply and then exhales slowly. Erastil be with us. Saren Ray, help us. Glancing nervously at the various medical instruments, the brave peasant woman got up on the operating table. Just don't butcher me is all I ask, she muttered in a trembling voice. Meanwhile, the foremost medical expert in the room still couldn't agree on what exactly it was they were trying to do. Stop arguing with me. Coughing up blood is a sure sign the problem is in the lungs. We look there, Jod insisted. No, it's the nausea we should be focusing on. We need to examine the stomach, Tristian objected. The clerics turned to the Baron in desperation, asking him to resolve the dispute. After careful consideration, he decided to side with Jod and search for the source of the disease in the patient's lungs. Tristian continued to object, but there was no more time for discussion. After a short prayer to Erastil, Jod took up a scalpel. Candlelight reflected off the surgical instruments and potion bottles. As Jod's scalpel made the first incision on the woman's skin, I could hear her inhale loudly through clenched teeth. I confess I lacked the courage to watch the surgery. Even after I turned away, I couldn't help but tremble from hearing the poor woman's screams. The air filled with the acrid scent of medical potions while Tristian mumbled prayers to ease the patient's pain, simultaneously scanning her body with magical sight. All I could do was whisper in my own prayers. But the Baron, he didn't lose his courage. He, um took the patient's hand and whispered something in her ear, distracting her from the pain. I couldn't hear exactly what, it's, what he said, but it worked. Charmed by his words, the peasant woman managed to stay still and let the cleric perform the surgery. The peasant woman couldn't scream anymore, her sore throat could do little more than groan. By Erastel's name, Jod whispered, I was wrong. The lungs are clear. Tristian closed the patient's wound with a healing spell. Please, don't stop now. You can still save her. The stomach. Hurry. Screams of pain rebounded off the prison walls once more, but this time it was over much faster. Jod cut, out, cut open the woman's stomach and pulled out a strange item. It looked like some kind of seed. A glowing, pulsing, thumb-sized seed. Before anyone could say anything, it flashed in Jod's fingers. He dropped it on the floor, just in time. On the spot where the seed landed, a portal opened and a roaring monster jumped out of it. Gained 270 experience. Uh... Hello there? Where are you going? Come back here. Here we go. Jod wipes the sweat from his brow, not even noticing the blood still on his hands. Erastil and Saren Ray be praised. They were truly on our side this day. It is a miracle. Tristian hands Jod a clean towel. Jod pulls himself together and wipes his hands and face. So, what have we learned? We've learned I was a pompous fool and Tristian was right all along. It's not a disease, but a parasite. Something of a vegetat vegetative origin. It resembles a seed. I'm sorry, my friend. I should have wagged my tongue less and listened to you more. Please don't mention it. It was a lucky guess, not worthy of your praise. Are you able to cure the others of the disease now? Yes, yes. 
Now that we know what to do, we can extract the seeds with much less risk to the patients and with much less suffering. What will you do next? There are still many patients here, and we'll start working on them immediately. And you, your grace, may want to search for the source of this disease. We still know neither where these seeds come from, nor how they get into people's bodies. New patients arrive daily, and how many ne never even find their way to a hospital? Our efforts here are not enough by themselves. We need to find the root of this problem. I have to go. Please, find the source of those wretched seeds. Right. We have our task cut out for us. So we have to go into the uh, marketplace because I need to buy some protection from electricity scrolls, if they have them, that is. Olive, stop yelling and listen to me. I'm trying to talk some sense into you. There's nothing to talk about, Olive. This is my home. Here I was born and it is here I die. You dolt, that's what I'm saying. You stay and you'll die before your time. Can't you see what's going on? Monsters, goblins and bandits? Turn your back for a moment and there's some fiend crawling right out of your neighbor's entrails. You talk too much. Just do your work, pray to Erastil and stay close to your home and family. And that's all there is to it. We have seen worse. I, back when you were half your age and unmarried, Eric, old friend, think of Jenny and your little ones. What if some beast comes knocking at your door? You're a woodcutter, not a swordsman. We have to leave the barony while we still can. I, Erastif of mercy, your grace. F Forgiveness, your grace, we were, we were just discussing the crops. I understand that you're worried about your close ones and yourself, but hear me, without loyal upstanding people by my side, I can never rescue this realm from the evils plaguing it. If you stay, I swear I will do everything in my power to put an end to this madness. Both men listen to you quietly, then look to each other, then clumsily bow to you. We understand your grace. These are tough times indeed, and there are things, all sorts of things, that you have to deal with. Don't you go listening to fools. The loyal and true will stand by your side. That's heartwarming. Now, scrolls. Protection from law. That won't help. How about Hasuf? Protection from chaos. Nope, that won't help. Our path leads on. Birdle doesn't sell any scrolls. Arsenal. I don't know if that's a cleric spell. Protection from electricity. Do you have a communal? Yes, you do. Let's buy two of those. Actually, let's buy three of them. And then we need to exit. And we'll bring this party. The first place we want to go is the Hodaglir. I will pause the recording while we travel over there. Um, if we have any random encounters or anything, I'll just uh, leave them be. Uh, first of all, let's click this and see. Yeah, we met the uh, visitor. Everything looks good there. Then pause the recording and I will see you in a moment. 
we've met some peaceful travelers. A skeletal salesman with a nightmare. A skeleton walks slowly towards you. His skull is filled with coins which glimmer through his empty eye sockets, clinking with every steps. He halts beside a cart filled with valuable looking items and waves at you in a friendly manner with his bony hand. Hello, hello. Allow me to introduce myself. I am the skeletal salesman. Do not look upon my face or its absence. Look at my wares. Choose. Buy. Who are you? Oh, this story is as sad as it is cautionary. The skeleton raises a thin white finger. I was once like you, wandering in search of adventure, fearlessly delving into dark caves, hidden temples and ancient ruins, taking whatever I pleased. But then... I set forth on an adventure which was to crown my career. I discovered the den of a dead dragon, a massive treasure trove lied within. I could purchase all of Absalom with such a hoard and half of rest of with the change. The owner lay dead upon the heap of gold, bare bones just as I'm now, breathless and still. How was I to know he wasn't truly dead, or rather he was, but not quite, you know, undead, a dragonlich? I couldn't have imagined it in my wildest dreams. He grabbed a hold of me with his bony talon, and I bid my life farewell. But then I look, then I looking upon the pile of bones and equipment left behind by the dragon's former guests, and my panic mind cuffed forth a brilliant idea, an idea worth a million coins. I offered the dragon a deal, and he agreed. Imagine that. You see, dragons are greedy for treasure, but they have no need of swords or armor. So I offered to hold a sale. I would turn the junk he has been storing for ages into newly minted coins, and the dragon approved of the idea and gave him the job. He did, however, place a curse upon me, as you can see. Now I am but bare bones. But fear not to tell you the truth, I rather enjoy it. I go wherever I please, talk to interesting people, and no longer need I fear death. Where is your master's den? I've been asked this question many times. Do you so badly desire that your weapons end up in my cart? If so, then just sell them to me. Or do you imagine that you will find your fortune where hundreds before you have only found death? True, true optimism runs through the blood of every treasure hunter, even those of us who have no blood at all. The skeleton laughs and rattles his bones. I've even suggested to my master that I sell maps to his den. Guaranteed revenue and new inventory. But he had no interest in this. He detests guests. He says they distract him from the contemplation of eternity. I suppose the clinking of the coins I bring him does not. Anyway, I couldn't point you to his den even if I so desired. My master robs all memory of the location of his den as soon as I step foot upon the highway. When it's time to replenish my stock, it is he who finds me. Now show me your wares. The skeleton happily clinks the coins in his skull, with great pleasure. Here, look, choose, buy. Um, really don't expect him to have anything that we want to buy. Necrotic Dwarven Urgrosh. What an interesting name. No, nope, he doesn't have anything we want to buy. Um, let's just keep moving. We're all, almost there. Time to get some rest, isn't it? More strength fades. Let's have a quick rest before we uh, go into the lair. You do the camouflage. You do the special roll. You do the cooking. You do the hunting and you do the watch order thing, blah, blah. No bantering? Wow. And here we are at the Hodag Lair. This isn't a too big thing. Amiri, there he is. Now I slice this lizard into tiny pieces. Watch out and don't get in my way. To battle! Amiri unleashes a fearsome battle cry and charges the monster. Actually, 
Actually, I do think you can do this one alone. Ha! One more down. Amiri kicks the remains of the monster with a boot and thrusts her chest out proudly. One less monster, people are safer. Good. Are you hurt? Scratches Amiri shrugs. Got some new scars. You don't have to prove anything to me. I already know that you're brave and a skilled warrior. Proof? She snorts. We killed it. It is enough. Congratulations. So what now? Ready to move on? Hunt new monsters? Ha! Was born ready. Skin that. There is a few things here we can loot. Potions and some coins. Don't want those. Great club plus two. Some more potions. Some food. Without a doubt. Some herbs. Forwards. I see something. And shard of the night spracer, perfect. Some edible moss. Collect that. We march ahead. And on that note, I think it is time to end the episode. So Thank you all so very much for joining me and I will see you all in the next one.